Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me today. My name is Claudia Puka. I'm from Western University in Canada, where I'm just wrapping up my PhD. Today, I'll be talking about academic achievement and IQ. So first, IQ stands for intellectual quotient. It's a measure of general intellectual abilities with average scores that range from 85 to 115. And among the studies that evaluate children with epilepsy, they find a lot of individual differences with some children scoring very high in the top 1% of the population and others scoring very low in the bottom 1%. As a group, however, 40% of children with epilepsy present with cognitive problems and may have IQ scores less than 70, which is in the range of intellectual disability. Beyond IQ, uh, academic problems are also pervasive and are present in 72% of children, where they might score below age expectations on at least one standardized test of reading, writing, or arithmetic. The other piece of this is that when we evaluate uh, academic achievement, we can also look at what's called underachievement to see whether the child is performing worse on academic tests than what we would expect based on their IQ. And from this, uh, we see that 42% of children uh, show underachievement. Now for our discussion here today, we're interested in what happens after surgery. Uh, so first, let's consider uh, this line which shows the typical development of children where they gain new skills over time. And in our case, a child with epilepsy may have slowed development um, because, of the, because of the underlying brain problems and seizures themselves might, might also cause greater slowing. And we're interested in what happens after surgery, and there's a number of possibilities. The first is that surgery does nothing. Uh, the child's development continues as it, as it would have otherwise. And what's important to note for this, um, for our discussion today, is that when we talk about IQ and other cognitive tests, they're typically uh, scored in reference to the general population. Um, so a child that has these, this trajectory uh, we see that the gap between typical development and the child is growing over time. So if this child was tested before and after surgery, their scores after surgery would be lower, even though they didn't necessarily lose any function. The other possible outcome after surgery is that there is a deficit, a loss of function, and this again appears as a decline in IQ scores and academic scores. The third scenario is that the cognitive slowing that was occurring before surgery has now stopped and the child develops um, at a rate that is more similar to typical children. And this is the scenario where we would see unchanged IQ scores or academic scores after surgery. We see that the gap between uh, typical development and this child stays consistent over time. And then lastly, accelerated development could occur where the child develops uh, skills at a faster rate than their peers, thereby closing the gap. And this is a scenario where we would see improvements in IQ before and after surgery. So it's really important to know what happens and the, the child's cognitive functioning before surgery for us to really talk about the, of, to talk about the impact of surgery itself. Without knowing what happened before, we can only talk about what's possible after surgery and not what the impact of surgery was. Now, in studies that have looked at surgeries that are not hemispherectomies, they typically find that in the first one or two years, there's little change in IQ and academic skills. More recent studies show that there are improvements in IQ, uh, typically associated with seizure control, and 30 to 40% of children show IQ improvements and 2 to 6% showed declines in IQ. There's been a lot uh, fewer research that's looked at academic skills in the long term. The one study is uh, shown here, and without going into too much details, since it wasn't hemispherectomy, hemispherectomy surgeries, the results showed that children that had the surgery and those that did not overall showed similar outcomes in the long term. But children with persistent seizures might have seen some declines in spelling and arithmetic. Now, 
Now with hemispherectomy, the situation is a little bit different because the majority of children present with severe cognitive delays. And this makes it uh, very difficult to use standardized tests of academic skills and IQ. Uh, particularly difficult for academic skills because most of these children might be very young. Uh, so academic skills may not be testable uh, since the child is so young. The good news is that the majority of these children do achieve seizure control. Um, and now in terms of the studies that have looked at IQs after surgery, these are the results of a, of a review article that was mentioned earlier this morning as well. So 29% had shown improvements in IQ after surgery, 10% had shown declines. But it's also really important to note that those uh, patients that had unchanged IQ scores, uh, their outcomes uh, could be considered pos uh, pos positive as well. Um, with this review, and as with the literature in general, uh, there's a lot of differences between the studies and the patients that they include. So the studies that were included here, some of them considered a change in five points in IQ as improvement or decline. Others used 15. So there is uncertainty in these estimates. The follow-up period is also very variable. Some studies follow patients for less than a year. Others follow, follow them for nearly two decades. In terms of academic skills, there's uh, fewer research tests available. One of the larger studies was conducted on over 100 children, an average of six years after surgery, and the, children, and the parents were asked to report in their children's reading skills. And they found that 42% of the children uh, were rated to have satisfactory reading skills. And these were, this consisted of children that had age-appropriate reading skills, or children that could read sentences, but a few years below their age expectations. Um, this study could not evaluate academic skills before surgery, uh, so it speaks to what is possible after surgery as opposed to the impact of surgery itself. Um, and it was also a parent report. We'll just skip that for the sake of time. Um, the other uh, study that's looked at academic skills has been done more recently and has focused only on the long-term follow-ups, so children five years or more after surgery. Um, but it was a much smaller subgroup. It was only 30 patients um, who, would, who did receive standardized tests of academic skills. And they found that more than 60% could read and write full sentences, and 3% had arithmetic skills beyond counting. So just like before, because there's no assessment before surgery, it, this really speaks to what's possible after surgery and doesn't speak to the impact of surgery itself. Nonetheless, the results do seem uh, quite positive. With respect to the characteristics that have been associated with improvements in IQ and academic skills, they're listed on the slide here. And a lot of these factors are related with one another. For example, persistent seizures after surgery may be a negative factor that predicts lower scores, but that could also be a marker for abnormalities in the non-operated hemisphere. Etiology is also related to a lot of these factors. For example, children with congenital uh, etiologies that start much earlier, that have a more severe course, would be seen earlier and have surgery earlier, as opposed to children that have acquired etiologies um, that occur later on. So overall, there is limited high quality data that's available, uh, particularly for academic skills, uh, but we could make a number of conclusions that are suggested based on the available literature. The first is that IQ remains stable and improves for the majority of these patients. I had previ previously shown this graph, and it seems like for the majority of patients, they fall into one of these two categories where they maintain their scores or show improvements. With respect to academic skills, um, there's no studies that have evaluated academic skills before surgery. Uh, the ones that are available suggest what's possible after, and they do suggest that for uh, 40 to 60 percent of patients, they are able to read and possibly write, uh, but obviously more research is needed in this area. And lastly, seizure control is achieved by the majority of these patients, and that has been shown to be something that is associated with better outcomes. Um, after surgery. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time.